to the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, presents by special recording, The Lone Ranger. If you like to put on shows for your friends, here's a tip. Take a look at the special Wheaties, Tricks, Sugar Jets, Cheerios, and Kick cereal packages at your grocer's right now. Just turn them around and you're looking at a magic Disneyland Park light-up. Light them up with Christmas tree lights, and they look so real, you can imagine you're seeing Disneyland Park at night. There's the rocket ship to the moon, and a special lion light-up that looks almost as real as the lions in Walt Disney's new true-life adventure Technicolor picture, The African Lion. Altogether, there are 18 different light-ups, and here's how you get them. Just look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Wheaties, Cheerios, Kicks, Tricks, and Sugar Jacks. The Mickey Mouse sign tells you there's a Disneyland Park light-up on the back of each package, free of extra cost. Start collecting Disneyland Park light-ups right now. Look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Trix, Sugar Jets, Kicks, Cheerios, and Wheaties. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, we call I'll Silver. Hey! spent 20 years in the United States Army. As supply sergeant at Fort Carter, Blinky was conscientious, but at times exasperating to the officers because of his habit of using his own judgment in interpreting requisitions. Major Calvert, a young officer, newly appointed to his first post as a Fort Commandant, was inclined to look upon Blinky's habit as a flagrant disregard for Army orders. Sergeant Wade... You know why I sent for you? No, sir. But if there's anything I can do to help you learn the ropes here, Major... Well, I can take it if I can't command this post without asking your help, I'll resign. No need to do that, Major. Seems as how I've been around here... Quiet, I'll... Sergeant. I'll do the talking. Yes, sir. I sent a requisition to your desk for a dozen blanks. You changed the order and we received six dozen. What do you have to say to that, Sergeant? <clears throat> well, sir, I figure it's better to have plenty of blankets. Sometimes when they go scouting for a few days or something like that, some of the men lose blankets, sir. Maybe so, but... Oh, what's the use? You've been here a long time, and you know the ropes. Also, I admit you get supplies through quickly. But you must stick to what's written on the requisition, understand? Yes, sir. I've discussed this sort of thing with you before, Sergeant. Yes, sir. In the future, see that you curb your tendency to change the requisitions. Yes, just as you say, sir. Now, tomorrow you're taking a detail into Rockton to bring back a load of new Winchester repeating rifles. Well, I've seen one of those rifles. By Jiminy Major, with a hundred of those in the hands of the troopers here, we could hold off most any number of Indians that might try to attack the fort. I know, I know all that. Just bring the repeaters back here, then I'll issue them to the men. Yes, sir. Also, I sent a requisition to your desk for twelve high drumheads. The drummer has difficulty with his drums because the excessive heat damages the drumhead. <laughs> he just don't know how to take care of them. Never mind that. Just bring the drumhead. Yes, sir. And we also need two drums of oil for the lamps and lanterns. All right, sir. That's all, Sergeant. Remember what I've told you. Yes, sir. <laughs> The following day, Sergeant Wade and a detail of troopers escorted a large army supply wagon to town. After purchasing the hide drum heads and the oil, 
the troopers met the train and transferred the many boxes of new rifles from the express car to the wagon. Later, Blinky stopped the wagon on the edge of town. Whoa, up there! What are we stabbing here for, Sergeant? I figure we might as well carry some of those repeaters, men. I'll unload a box of them and pass them out. Just put the old single shocks in the wagon. Let's get busy now. <laughs> After distributing the new repeater rifles to his detail of six men, Blinky gave the order to proceed toward the fort. Later, as they rode through a valley, they were startled when... Hey, hey, hey. Indians coming down the slope. Must be a couple of dozen. Use those repeaters, men. This is a chance to try them out. Hurry it up now. The troopers, using the Winchester repeaters, had the advantage not only of longer range, but also of continuous fire. Short time, the Indians, leaving their wounded, gave up and disappeared over the ridge. My thunder, look at that! Because of these repeaters, we beat those redskins off, and they couldn't get close enough to do more than crease one or two of us. Wait till the men of the fort hear about this. Get up there! Riding in the hills outside of Rockton, heard the distant battle and rode hurriedly toward the valley. They entered the valley just as the shooting stopped, and the Indians rode out of sight beyond the ridge. Easy, Silver, easy, fellow, easy. 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 Army wagon. Troopers seem to have driven off the Indians. Ah. Found the guns. He thinks that plenty of Indians attacking. Maybe there are only few. They'll catch up to the wagon and find out what happened. Is Blisky with mask on, King of Hobby? I carry a letter from the former commandant of the new one, Major Calvert. If necessary, I'd use that to identify me. Oh, The Lone Ranger and Cottle caught up to the wagon and were recognized as friends by Sergeant Blinky. The sergeant told them what had happened, and when they arrived at the fort, he introduced the masked man and Indian to the major. Then Blinky left to supervise the unloading of the rifles. The major read the letter carried by the Lone Ranger, then said, ah, The former commandant writes a good report of you and your Indian friend, sir. He told me about you before he left. I'm very glad to meet you. Thank you, Major Calvert. We came to pay our compliments and to offer our services whenever needed. I appreciate your offer, but the affairs of the fort are moving smoothly. Oh. Come in. Well, Sergeant Wade? I came to report, sir, that the new rifles are unloaded. If you want to distribute them now, the men will be mighty pleased to get them. I'll distribute them when I'm ready, Sergeant. The Sergeant used good judgment in giving the repeaters to the men in his detail today. What? Hadn't been you disobeyed my orders. I reckon I did, I'll sir. I'll send you to the guardhouse for this. Just a minute, Major. If the escort hadn't carried those rifles, the Comanches would have taken the entire what? wagon load of them. The Comanches? Yes, the wagon was attacked by about two dozen Comanche Indians. Due to the fact that the sergeant had the foresight to issue the repeaters to the men, the Indians were driven off. That's right, Major. I didn't get a chance to go to your quarters, Sergeant Wade, and stay there until you hear from me. Yes, sir. Thunder, I don't know what to do with that man. He makes his own army rules. And every time he does, well... <laughs> Something happens to support his judgment, is that it, Major? In a way, yes. <laughs> Blinky, as he's fondly called by the men, may exasperate you by his seeming disregard for discipline. But it isn't intentional. Because of his long service with the army here in the West, he instinctively uses his own judgment in some matters without realizing he's disobeying orders. Maybe so. I I admit it was fortunate the detail carried the repeaters today, but the army has run on discipline. And regardless of the consequences, every man, including Sergeant Wade, must abide by it. In some cases, Major, those who make the rules don't realize the situation here in the West as well as Sergeant Wade does. Former commandants have found it wise at times to overlook the sergeant's tendency to use his own judgment. Perhaps... But as long as I'm in command here, I'll not allow it. Come in. Corporal Hawkins reporting, sir. Oh, what is it, Corporal? A drummer, sir. He asked for a dozen new high drumheads. 
sergeant brought only two. What? I distinctly ordered a dozen. The sergeant changed that order. Yes, sir. Also, Sergeant Wade brought back 12 barrels of oil. Sir, there's no room in the supply cabin. 12 barrels? I told him to bring two. I used the word drums of oil. I suppose he stupidly confused that with the order for the dozen drum heads. Oh, no, sir. The sergeant said the drummer ought to learn how to take care of the high drum heads and didn't need more than two new ones. Also, he said the storekeeper had only 12 barrels left and didn't know when he'd get more, so he took them off. This is the last straw. Load ten barrels of the oil back under the wagon. Take someone with you and return that oil to town. Oh, yes, sir. But it's sundown. No matter. Spend the night in town and come back to the fort in the morning. Rockton is only a two-hour drive from here. Yes, sir. One more thing. Tell the sergeant of the guard to arrest Sergeant Wade. He'll spend 30 days in the guardhouse, and I'll see to it that he's broken to the rank of private. Yes, sir. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, all you do is the question, and here's one of the happy people have to pay. Western champions, for instance. When Bobby Feller takes the mound, the outfield boys sit on the ground. That Wheaties pitching leaves them there, watching batters fan the air. And when we name our Wheaties crew, Big Ted Klazuski's in there, too. He'll face those hurlers day or night and knock their fastballs out of sight. Bob Feller and Ted Klazuski both know that Wheaties magic. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Keep on eating your weenies. And you'll be doo-doo-doo-doo and I'll be okay. Now to continue. Infuriated by Sergeant Wade's disregard of orders, the young major commanded his arrest and demotion. The Lone Ranger, realizing there was nothing more he could do to help the sergeant, arose, saying, Well, Papa, I tried to tell the wagon major. I'm sorry you see fit to take drastic steps with Sergeant Wade. That's the only course left for me, sir. I'm glad to have met you and your Indian friend. I hope you'll drop in again. Thank you, Major. And adios, Uh huh. The wagon will be leaving as soon as the barrels of oil are loaded. Good. We'll be waiting at the fort gate. Goodbye, Major. Goodbye, sir. Fort Carter was built on the side of a valley through which ran a wide, shallow creek, separating the fort from the ridge opposite. The fort was some 300 yards from the fast-flowing stream, which came from a heavily wooded area at one end of the valley. The trail to town, on the same side of the creek as the fort, ran parallel to this stream. The Lone Ranger and Tonto mounted on their horses, waited outside the fort gate for the wagon. Yes, plenty dark. You must have it. Yes, there's no moon tonight. And even if there were, it would be hidden with a heavy overcast. Ah, it's better wagon wait till morning and go to town. I yes. agree. Yes, yes. Oh, here comes Corporal with wagon. Come on, Bruce. Get him up to town. made slow progress. The trail ran upstream beside the creek through the wooded area. As they moved slowly through the woods, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and the two troopers heard hoofbeats coming toward them. Oh, 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 oh. Sounds like one horse. Can't see a thing, but the rider can see the lantern on our way. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, it's our army, Scott. Hey. Hi, Hank. Hey. Why are you heading for town at this hour and in the dark? The Major's orders taking something back to town. It's about time he began to learn a few things, Zach. The mass men and the engine. Ah, they're both friends, Hank. You've heard of the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? That's right. Man alive, I'm sure glad you're around, mister. We're in for trouble. What do you mean? I've been scouting around. I found out the Comanches, a couple of hundred of them, planned to creep up on the fort in the darkness. What? They learned about a ship and the new rifles, and they planned to get them. Holy mackerel. 
dark as it is, they might be able to get over the stockade. Yeah. And they know there's only 75 minutes to fort. They can creep up, surround the fort in the dark, and then use crude ladders to get inside before the troopers can see them. They're getting on the ridge right now. Well, how did you find out? I saved the life of a Comanche brave horse. He tipped me off. They plan to sneak up on the fort in an hour from now. Uh, what about the townsmen? The rock Kim is practically deserted. Everybody wants the rodeo 20 miles away. Anyway, you're only half a mile from the fort. There's still a long way to town. Why not go on to the fort and inform the major? Then suggest that he issue the new repeater rifles at once. Even they won't do much good if the men can't see what they're shooting at. Now, wait a minute. This wagon is carrying ten barrels of oil. Yeah, that's right. I suggest the scouts go on to the fort at once to warn them. I think there's a way we can help them here. I'll leave right now, mister. Yeah, yeah. What can we do? The attack is to start one hour from now. Yeah. Let's unload the barrels of oil and carry them to the banks of the stream. All right, let's get busy. Right. Easy, steady, big right. A short time later, the Army scout gave his report to the Major. The new repeater rifles were immediately issued to the men, and they took their posts to watch and wait for the attack. The young Major, trying his best not to show his nervousness, stood on one of the ramparts near the front gate, talking to the scout. Carnation, take this infernal darkness. I can't see a thing. That's right, Major. There's no way of telling when those redskins have crossed that creek, sneak up to the stockade and come at it. They won't make a sound either. The creek's about 300 yards away. They could cross, then climb right up in front of us before we'd know it. Yeah. According to what I was told, the uh, Comanches will be starting down the slope from the ridge in five minutes. Then in five minutes, I'll order the men to start shooting. At what? They can't see a thing. The Comanches will know just where the troopers are placed. I figure the masked man has a plan in mind. I, for one, would wait. I think the masked man has deserted us. I'm responsible for this fort. I didn't like the way he intimated I was wrong in dealing with Sergeant Wade this afternoon. Yeah, I heard about that. And I agree with the masked man. You forget yourself, sir. No, I don't. I'm hired by the Army, but I'm not an enlisted man, Major. I got a right to express my opinion without being afraid of getting sent to the guardhouse. Now, if you've got any sense, you'll just wait and forget that order to start firing into the dark at nothing. The Major waited tensely. Then he struck a match cautiously to look at his watch. Uh, three minutes to go. This way hey, Major, to... look up toward the woods. Flames leaping in the air. They're moving swiftly down the valley. Now I know. The masked man poured oil on the waters of the creek. Look at up, Major. The flames are lighting up the entire slope. Yes, look, coming can't... down the slope of the command. Trying to get across before the flames form a wall across the valley. In the mean, this starts firing now. Those new rifles will do the trick. They have targets to shoot at. Fire at will! Crossed the stream before the flames passed the fort, but the light from the burning oil made them targets for the rapid rifle fire from the fort. Soon the entire valley in front of the fort was lighted by the flames, and the troopers, using the long range repeating rifles, took great toll of the attacking Comanches. leaving their ponies back on the ridge. Surprised and dismayed by the light from the flaming oil and the rapid firing from the fort, they were unable to go back across the creek to their ponies. Finally, running in great disorder, they hurried down the valley, leaving many dead and wounded. The attack was a complete failure, and the Comanches were defeated. Headquarters, the young major appeared embarrassed as he faced the masked man. Mister, I I want to thank you and your friend for your help. 
It's a very ingenious plan to send that burning oil down the street. We were fortunate to have all that oil, Major. Oh, I, uh... <laughs> I, I thought of that. I, I sent for Sergeant Wayne. Oh, good. I'll be glad to see him. Those, uh, Winchester repeating rifles proved their worth against great odds, Major. Yes. Because of them, we defeated the attack, though we were greatly outnumbered. Come in. Sergeant Wade reporting, sir. Oh, uh, <clears throat> and Sergeant, I, uh, I have decided to drop all charges against you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Major. From now on, Sergeant. I'll I... follow your orders to the letter, sir. If you do, I'll break your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant, I I think it's about time I acknowledge that I'm green at this sort of thing. Now on, I'll let you use your own judgment. Why, uh, I... Thanks, sir. And you, mister? Do you have any other ideas? Yes, Major. That you follow up your advantage by sending for the Indian ponies over on the ridge. Then at dawn, round up the balance of the Comanches. They can't go far on foot. Uh, Toto and I'll return and ride with you if you want us to. Fine, fine. Maybe with you and... J uh, Blinky to help. I'll learn how to really command a far western post. Major, a man who'll acknowledge his mistake is bound to succeed. With you at dawn. Adios, come on, Right, right here. Sergeant, I... I'm afraid I underestimated that mess, man. He's well worth having as a friend and advice. He sure is, Major. He's the finest hombre I ever met. There's no greater American alive than the Lone Ranger. Special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.